advice uh, once we finish the tuition and revision okay the period just before the exam so the way i teach sam is firstly you know tax is a very vast syllabus so i don't believe um, in after revision we should be looking at new questions okay so what i recommend uh, uh what i recommend you guys do is go over the questions we've done okay so go over the questions we've done yeah uh, absolutely. Oh, uh, Doug, no. So if you're ACA qualified, then I think, you know, you have to pay money um, in order to sit the ACC exam, because the idea here is, you know, you have to be an ACC student and you have exemption fees and so on. So I, I don't suggest you go down that path, Doug. Yeah. It's just a waste of time, basically. Um, um, yeah, if you're just looking to, uh, you know, build up on your tax knowledge, just attend a tax course, Doug. Yeah, and that's it. So uh, we've got lots of, we've got 99 people enrolled on this course, guys. So we've got lots of people joining. So that's why I've recommended, you know, if you don't mind, um, yeah, uh, to try and um, uh, join the course before um, so that, you know, once we, um, um, once we um, kick off at uh, 1.30, we can get cracking. Does everyone have their calculators ready? Does everyone have their calculators ready? Yeah. So yeah excellent excellent yeah Anan ananya yeah shamoya welcome um hey lovely to see everyone okay so um uh is everyone enjoying the good sunny weather we're having okay so is everyone enjoying the sunny weather we're having um uh, uh in london it's an absolutely glorious day okay okay guys yeah so you can see shamoya i've decided to come to you from uh from Tower Bridge in the city today, okay? So you can see uh, it's a lovely day out there. So I'm sitting by the river, I'm sitting by the river uh, and I'm teaching you tax, okay? So we're gonna have a great time, yeah. So it's lovely and uh, you know, you can enjoy a, a nice uh, water, a nice cold drink, okay? Enjoy a nice cold drink and a bite to eat. Has anyone been out, uh, you know, now that things are opening up, has anyone been out to a restaurant yet? Has anyone been out to a restaurant yet? Um, as things are opening up. Al fresco, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely correct, Sam. Yeah, it's all al fresco dining now, yeah. So it's outdoors like I'm doing here, uh, you know, and uh, what you do is uh, you sit al fresco, uh, you have a cup of coffee or a bite to eat uh, in the open air, yeah. So, um, has anyone been out, been out to a restaurant? What have you guys had, guys? So um, I went to a lovely uh, Mediterranean restaurant, yeah. I, I went to a lovely Mediterranean restaurant the other day. Um, it was my son's birthday, and it was so nice uh, to be back um, in a restaurant, you know, after almost a year, you know, um, after the huge big lockdown, um, so for four or five months and so on. 
So it was really, really uh, very, very pleasant. So um, uh, I recommend you do that, you see? Yeah, a good food, excellent, yeah. Um, my, my son is, um, my son's uh, 21, Doug, yeah. So my son's 21 and he's in university, yeah. So he's in university, yes, absolutely, yeah. So yeah, thank you, thank you for wishing my son. Uh, yeah, so we had a lovely time um, and I'd recommend all of you get out there and make the most of things. Um, yes, actually, you know what? Um, uh, yeah, absolutely, Doug, a big birthday. Um, you know what, I haven't seen that. Um, Shamoya, um, are you talking about, are you talking about which exam, Shamoya? I haven't seen that actually. So Shamoya has just said that on the ACC, can all of you see, um, um, so uh, excellent, yeah, all of you are sharing your answers, yeah, sharing your things. So have any of you seen on the ACC a practice platform, they seem to have updated the answers. Normally, the ACC had never updates their tax answers, okay? But um, I'll have to check that, Shamoya. But I want to check and find out whether or not they've, um, I want to find out whether or not they've put, do you, do you know if they put the March exam out there, uh, Shamoya? So I'll have to check that. Uh, last time I checked, they hadn't, okay? Um, no, up to, oh, okay, up to December 2020, Shamoya. Excellent, excellent. Now, what I all, also do, guys, is um, once again, I recommend you visit my website, okay? But also on LinkedIn, I put answers to previous exam questions. And the answers I put up are always updated to the current Finance Act, okay? So one of the things you can practice uh, as you're going forward is to have a go at um, some of those questions I put up there, okay? Um, Shamoya, uh, sorry, um, if you go into my website, if you go into my website and um, click on blog, okay? So where it says blog, and then the whole thing will open up and you'll see lots and lots of stuff there. Is that okay, Shamoya? So if you go on the blog, yeah. That's where I put things up. Then there's a section for exam techniques. Um, there's an exam, there's a section for study techniques and so on. Yeah, excellent, excellent, good. Okay, guys, now with regard to uh, summer being here now, is everyone in, going outdoors? Is everyone going outdoors? Because you know, we've been cooped up. We've been cooped up in our houses uh, for a long, long time, okay? So we've been cooped up in our houses for a long time. And, um, and as a result, it's been affecting our mental wellness, okay? So it's been affecting our mental wellness. So I do recommend everyone uh, goes out there uh, and um, makes the most of the outdoors, okay? Um, while we're on the subject of the outdoors, I just wanna find out, does anyone um, go running? Does anyone go running in the class? Does anyone go running? I used to, Shamoya, yeah, yeah, Shamoya, you used to. So Shamoya, it's a good idea, like, you know, this weekend, Shamoya, it's, ah, Ananya, excellent. Ananya, you do running, excellent. So I recommend, guys, you know, try and do a little bit of that, yeah. Doug used to do a little bit, excellent. But, you know, if you can't run, if you don't want to run, at least take a long walk, okay? Ah, Shamoya does body pump at the gym, wow, okay? Yeah, absolutely correct. Wow, Shamoya, that's great. Um, I must admit, yeah, I, I don't know what body pump is, Shamoya. Yeah, what's body pump? Okay, so what's body pump? Um, is it just the circuit? Are you go you go from one station to another? Yeah, but um, yeah. So uh, what I'd recommend you guys do is get out there, do some exercise. You know, this is a good time of the year to do it. So it's now springtime. Uh, it's a chance to recharge yourself. Um, and if you go out there, you know, you'll start feeling better in yourself and you'll also find that your uh, studying goes well, okay? So you'll also find that your studying goes well. So, you know, after we've done our lecture, I, I'm encouraging the whole class, I challenge you to go out there. If you don't want to run, at least do a walk, okay? Now, if you're walking, guys, how long do you need to walk for? If you're going to take an outdoor walk to get some benefit. Yes, at least 30 minutes, yeah. It just 30 minutes is good enough, Sam. Yeah, an hour is good, Sadaf, but you know, if you can't do an hour, if you're busy, you know, doing bits and pieces, you guys are busy, you've got your hands full, 
do half an hour. I would recommend you start off with half an hour, okay? So if you do half an hour, because the, the good thing is the weather is going to be great now, okay? So I think that the forecast for the weather is going to be very positive going forward. So, um, so this is something I, I recommend you guys do. Okay, so any questions before we start, guys? Okay, guys, uh, can all of you, hi, Asa. Okay, uh, Asma, uh, this session is also suitable for taxation. Asma, yeah? So, Asma, this session is also suitable for taxation. Um, to be honest with you, it's suitable for any tax exam. Uh, you know, if any of you guys are doing any other tax exams, um, this is suitable for you, okay? Um, the only thing, um, Asma, is research and development. I'll be covering a little point there on research and development, which is not examinable in ta in for the first tax paper. Okay. Um, as my, I just want to tell you while we're on the subject, you're talking about taxation. I'm in the process of writing a
sorry. So someone's unmute. Okay, guys. So uh, please make sure your phone, your phone, and everything is uh, is is muted. Okay, is muted. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah. As myself, so I'm in the process of writing a set of condensed notes for taxation as well, which you will find very useful. Okay. So if you're interested in purchasing that, you know, you can drop me a message on LinkedIn. Okay, guys, so um, can everyone see and hear me clearly? Can everyone see and hear me clearly? Yes. Hi, Nafisa. Uh, welcome. Welcome to the course, Nafisa. Okay. Um, well, welcome to the seminar. I keep on saying course, guys. Hi, Vanita. Nice to see you, Vanita. Hey, Malin. Okay. So great to see all of you. So I've, I've been seeing your names. Hi, Emma. Lovely to see you. I've been seeing your names, but obviously it's so nice to get a chance to meet you uh, virtually. Okay. So it's really great to have a chance to meet you virtually. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Asal. Um, is it nice and sunny where everyone is? Is it nice and sunny where you are, guys? Is it nice and sunny? Yeah. Hi, Kelly, Andrew, Malin, Sadaf. Yeah. Great. A bit windy, a bit windy. Yeah. So I've just been saying great weather. Uh, I'll encourage all of you, hi, Benita. I'll encourage all of you to try and get outdoors, okay? So I'm challenging everyone today after the lecture, after the seminar, I want everyone to go outdoors just for half an hour, okay? So that's my challenge to you today, guys. Half an hour outdoors. If you don't want to run, uh, walk, okay? If you don't want to run, walk but just half an hour outdoors, okay? So is everyone ready to take up that challenge, guys? Is everyone ready to take up the challenge? Yes, yes, okay, excellent, good, good, good. Now, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm, yeah, avoid passing by the pubs, that's fine, uh, Nafisa, you can pass by the pubs, you can't go inside, they can serve you al fresco, okay? So yeah, it's fun, but what I want you guys to do is make the most of this because what you find is you'll feel so much better. You'll feel so much better. Now, as it's my challenge, guys, what I'm going to do, um, so what I'm going to do, am I allowed to walk or do I have to run, guys? Am I allowed to walk or do I have to run? Run, run, run. I'm running, guys. I'm running, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually running, okay? So I'm actually going to run, okay? Um, so uh, I'll be running, okay? So I'll be running. Okay, guys, does everyone have their calculator? Yeah, yeah, you can see Shamoya, okay? So you can see um, I'm getting better now, okay? So remember, guys, um, with uh, things like personal allowances, uh, qualifying charitable donations, and... Um, personal allowances, qualifying charge for donations and double tax relief. If you don't use them, you lose them like your muscles, okay? So you can see now guys, um, because lockdown is over, um, we're getting back in shape, okay? So I want all of you guys to get back in shape so that when we come to June, everyone is ready for the exam, okay? Okay, is everyone ready to start? Is everyone ready to start? Yeah, excellent, excellent, good, yeah. Does everyone have their calculator with them? Does everyone have their calculator? Yes, good. Okay, okay guys, so welcome to the course guys. Um, I'm so pleased all of you can make it, okay? Um, so what I'll be doing today is I'll be taking you through um, through the Finance Act update, and I'm going to focus on the important areas that uh, are likely to come up in the exam, okay? So I'm going to make it very interactive. Um, so um, what, um, 
what I'll be asking you to do is respond, okay? I'll be asking you to respond. So I want to see all of you responding in the chat box, okay? So um, I hope all of you are uh, accustomed to using the chat box. So I'll be monitoring your responses in the chat box. So we're going to have a lot of fun today, okay? So um, it's coming up to uh, one twenty-nine, guys. So just one more minute. Uh, we've got Leslie joining, okay? So Leslie joining. So I think all of you are here now um, and we're going to crack on, okay? So we have a few uh, latecomers joining us, okay? Okay, you've never done Zoom on an iPad. iPad, this is hard. Daniel, you should be using a laptop, Daniel, okay? You guys, honestly, why are you using an iPad, okay? Why are you using an iPad, okay? Uh, never mind, guys, never mind. You should be using a laptop so we can rock and roll, okay? Ah, it's easier to sit on the sofa, Kelly. Lovely, okay? Okay, good. Okay, so let's get cracking. It's 1.30 now, guys, so we're going to start uh, going, okay? Okay, so um, let's start off with a basic introduction. So Finance Act update, guys. Um, so Finance Act 20 will be examinable. I might have to close down the chat box, okay? So I'll close down the chat box for now. So Finance Act 20 will be examinable from June 21 up to March 22, okay? So that's why it's a good idea to learn it, guys, because even if, um, even if there are a few changes, so even if there are a few changes, remember, it will still be examinable up all the way till March 22. And the examiners like putting the new areas into the exam. So this is very important, okay? So with the stuff I'm covering with you today, is this stuff likely to come up in the exam? Is it likely to come up in the exam? What do you think? Yes, absolutely. So just for you guys to know, uh, when we say yes, instead of typing yes, we type in Y and for no, we type in N, okay? So uh, Y for yes or M for no. So um, we'll be looking at the different taxes in this order. I'll be starting off with income tax and then I'll be going on to capital gains tax. Um, in terms of IHT, there are no changes. VAT, there are no changes. Stamp duty, there are no changes, okay? So we'll be just talking about income tax, capital gains tax, a bit of corporation tax, and national insurance. So um, let's kick off by taking a look at income tax. Now, the good news, guys, is for income tax, we have the same rates, okay? So for income tax, we have the same rates. So do any of you know what the personal allowance is? How much is the personal allowance, guys? Yes, thank you, Nafisa. The personal allowance is 12,500. Thank you, Emma, Avnish, uh, Asa, and Ananya. Yeah, I'd, I'd recommend you learn that for the exam so that you don't waste your time in the exam looking at the rates for simple things like this. Uh, the basic rate band then is 37,500 and the higher rate band is 150,000. So how much do you need to earn in order to become a higher rate taxpayer, guys? How much do you need to earn to become a higher rate taxpayer? 50,000. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Asma. Uh, thank you, Sammy. Um, now, when you pass your ACC exams and you finish your advanced tax, will all of you become higher rate taxpayers, guys? Will everyone become a higher rate taxpayer? Why for yes or N for no? Yes, Sadie. Yes. The idea is yes, absolutely. So remember, guys, we're doing this, uh, but you're going to have so much fun. But the good news is you're also going to be making more money. Okay. So I want you to remember that. So uh, uh, we're good, uh, you know, whenever you feel yourself getting discouraged and so on, remember this will help you in the future, okay? When we tax income, we start by taxing, uh, we, ta we start by taxing uh, non-savings income first, then savings, um, and then what we do is we finally tax dividends, okay? So you tax non-savings first, then savings and finally dividends. Now, the nil rate band for savings and dividends are exactly the same. For uh, savings, if you're a basic rate taxpayer, what is the nil rate band? 1,000, excellent, excellent. Thank you, thanks, Nafisa, thanks, Devin. Um, um, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, 
what is the nil rate band for savings? 500, excellent. What about for some of you who are earning more than 150,000? Okay, people like Leslie. Leslie could be earning more than 150,000. Yes, for Leslie, um, Leslie, uh, Leslie earns more than 150,000. Leslie gets zero nil rate band for savings. Now for dividends, do any of you know what the nil rate band is for dividends? 2000, excellent, excellent. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, um, so I'll just admit Justina there. Um, so I've got a few people coming in now. Okay, apologies for that guys. So um, that's why I told you to come in earlier. Okay, great. Now um, for employees, for employees, when you, uh, when you get your salary, what do you have to pay on the salary um, apart from income tax? Do any of you know? Thank you, national insurance, yes. So when you receive a salary, you have to pay income tax and national insurance. So let's say the examiner tells you James is a basic rate taxpayer. So James is a basic rate taxpayer and gets a bonus of 10,000. How much after tax income will James have? Can all of you type in the answer? So the first thing I want you to tell me is what rate of income tax will James pay? He's a basic rate tax payment. Good, yes, excellent, he pays 20%. What rate of employee national insurance will James pay? Thank you, uh, Emma, Kevin, uh, Ashar, thank you, 12%. So excellent, so many of you guys have worked it out already. So it's 20% income tax plus 12% national insurance. So a basic rate taxpayer pays 32% tax. So how much after tax bonus will James have? Can you type in your answer, please? Come on, guys. We just said it's 32%, so I don't want anyone to come up with some strange answers, okay? So good, excellent, good. So you have to think about this. So you pay, you will get 6,800 or 68% after tax. Excellent, yeah, good, 68, yeah. Malin, not 68,000, Malin, okay? It's James, James is only getting a bonus of, of 10,000, okay? <laughs> good, now Mira, Mira is a higher rate taxpayer and gets a bonus of 10,000 pounds, okay? Now, because Mira is a higher rate taxpayer, what rate of income tax does Mira have to pay, guys? Excellent, 40%, thank you, guys. What rate of national insurance does Mira pay? 2%, excellent. So in the case of Mira, because she's a higher rate taxpayer, she pays 40% income tax and 2% national insurance. So can everyone work out how much after tax bonus Mira will have. Excellent, some very good answers coming through. Thank you, Amitra, Avnish, Shamsha, Asma. I'm sorry, guys, I may not be able to say all your names, okay? Uh, because obviously we have a big class here, but I'll try and say as many of them as I can. Excellent. So this is another thing your examiner will ask you about. He calls these computations marginal tax computations. And what you have to do in the exam is you have to work out the after-tax income. The last thing the examiner could tell you is Olu is self-employed and a basic rate taxpayer, okay? So Olu is self-employed and a basic rate taxpayer. So can any of you tell me what rate of income tax Olu has to pay? He's a basic rate taxpayer, guys. 20%. What rate of class four national insurance does Olu pay? 9%, excellent, very good. So always paying tax at 29%. So can everyone work out how much after-tax income Olu would have? Excellent, some brilliant answers coming through, okay? So very good, so 7,100. So let's take a look at the solution together. So in the case of James, James has got to pay income tax at 20%, class one NIC at 12, so he's paying 32% tax. So his after-tax income is 6,800, okay? Uh, Mira is an employee. She's got to pay income tax at 40% and class one NIC at 2%. So uh, 
a total of 42%. So the after-tax income will be 5,800. And the last person we have is Olu, who's self-employed. He's got to pay income tax at 20% and class four national insurance at 9%. So paying a total of 29%. So the after-tax income is 7,100. Did all of you enjoy that? If you enjoyed that, type in Y for yes. If you did not enjoy that, type in, um, type in N for no, okay? Yes, I'm very happy to see everyone enjoyed that. So uh, let's now look at some of the changes to income tax, okay? So when you're dealing with um, income tax in the exam, always ask yourself, is the individual employed or self-employed? Carol, Carol, you need to be fast today, Carol. Okay? Sorry, Carol. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, Carol. Okay. So, Carol, uh, Carol is saying she doesn't understand how uh, Mira uh, has got to pay uh, paid five thousand eight hundred. So, Carol, um, Mira is paying income tax at forty and class two NIC at two percent. Sorry, class one NIC at two percent. So she's paying forty two. So all you say is a hundred, take away forty two, and that gives you fifty eight. Are you okay with that, Carol? Yeah. Okay. So this is what the examiner will ask you about in the exam. Now let's start looking at some of the changes, guys. We have to crack on. We've got a lot of stuff to cover, guys. Okay. Um, so um, in terms of us working from home, is uh, are all of you guys working from home currently? Is everyone working from home? Yes. Okay. So if you're working from home, um, the idea here is you can claim a flat rate deduction expense for home working, which is six pounds per week, okay? And you can claim this without any records. Do any of you get this money back from your employer? Does your employer give you the six pounds? No. So even if your employer does not give you the six pounds, you can claim the tax relief, okay? So you can claim the tax relief. If anyone you know, needs help with that, you can always drop me a message on LinkedIn, okay? Now, Currently, we know that the government is trying to push electric and hybrid cars. So now we have a new type of car, uh, electric hybrid car benefit based on the range of car, which is given in the exam. Okay. Yeah, Shamoya, yeah, you, you, can, you can contact me, Shamoya, and I'll give you some pointers. I'll help you out with that. Okay, Shamoya? Um, Rina is a hybrid car. Rina has a hybrid car which has a list price of 15,200 and CO2 emissions of 26 grams, okay? And CO2 emissions of 26 grams. So what you have to do for electric cars now is you look at the range of the car, okay? So the examiner told you the electric range for this car here is 39 miles. So, um, Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, are you told that you're absolutely right? Yeah, you're looking at it on a monthly basis. Please make sure, guys, <laughs> that you um, you mute your phones, okay? Hassan, Hassan. We don't want to hear Hassan eating his crisps, guys, okay? So please mute your stuff, yeah, good. Okay, um, so um, with electric cars, the examiner will give you the range of the cars. So what he told you here is, um, the tax rates given are 30 to 39 miles. For 30 to 39 miles, we have a percentage of 10%. Okay, so we have a percentage of 10%. So can all of you work out Rena's car benefit? So this is the new thing that's coming to our exam. So uh, we're told her electric range is 39 miles. So all you have to do is look at the mileage here. So Sam, all you have to do now Sam, is you take the list price and you multiply by that percentage based on the range of the car. Can you see that? Guys, what stuff are you working on? Very good, it should be like, thank you, Anita, thank you, Bella, Boba, and Shamsha, excellent. It's just 1520. Have all of you got that? Does everyone understand that? Thank you, Sadie, yeah? 1520, thank you, yeah, thanks, Malin. So that's the new thing that's come into our exam, whereby for electric cars, you look at the range of the car. Now for other cars, 
the base level is now 55 grams per kilometer and the percentage given is 14 percent okay so the minimum percentage for car benefits is 14 percent now we're told hamish has a diesel car with co2 emissions of 112 okay so he's got a diesel car with co2 emissions of 112 and we're told his car meets the rde2 standard and it has a list price of 22,000 pounds. So can everyone work out Hamish's car benefit and type your answer into the chat box? So the examiner likes examining the car benefit. So you're doing Hamish's car benefit, guys, okay? So the base level is 14 grams, 14 grams, okay? Uh, 14%. So guys, so let me show you how to do this. With regard to the 112, are you going to round up or round down? Round up or round down? Round down, yes. So you round down to 110, okay? So you round down to 110. And what you then say is 110 take away 55. So 110 take away 55, okay? So what is 110 take away 55, guys? because some of you are working out the wrong answer. That's 55. Once you've got 55, thank you, divide by five. Divide by five. Very good. So that gives you 11%, okay? So what you have to do is take the 11 and add it to the 14. So, so far you're up to what percentage? 25%, thank you. That's what I was looking for. Why were you guys working out some strange stuff, guys? Okay. So I was looking for 25%. Now, here, Hamish, very good. At last, I'm getting some right answers coming through. Very good. Yeah, I think you, you guys are beginning to understand it. I'm happy I did this with you. Okay. Now, we're told his car meets the RDE2 standard. Because his car meets the RDE2 standard, okay, so let's say you've got a, a diesel Mercedes your Mercedes will meet the RDE2 stack, okay? Because it's got special filters there. Do we have to add 4% for diesel, guys? Do we add 4% for diesel? No. Uh, Shamoya, you have to remember that for every five grams, uh, we add 1%, okay? So let's now cover this. Uh, so in the case of the electric car, for Rena's car benefit, that's very easy, guys. All you have to do is look at the range of the car, okay? So for Rena's car benefits, you just look at the range of the car. And what the examiner told you here is that the electric range was 39 grams. And what you can see is in the exam, you will be given, um, in the exam, you will be given uh, 30 to 39 grams is 10%, okay? So all you have to do for her is just multiply the list price by 10%. For um, so what did I say, Angus? I was thinking of Scottish people here. So instead of saying Hamish, sorry, I said Angus. Uh, for Angus here, for every five grams above 55, what you do is add one percent. So we're going to take the base level, which is 14, we add 14 percent, and that takes us up to 25 percent. Uh, for hybrid cars, in the, uh, yeah, so we're up to 25 percent, and then. If the car is a diesel engine, we add 4%, but here, if the car meets the RDE2 standard, we don't, okay? So that means you'll just multiply the list price by 25%. Nafisa, you will be given the percentages based on the range of the electric car in the exam. So do all of you feel you can work out the, um, the benefits for electric cars and normal petrol or diesel cars? Type in Y for yes or N for no. Excellent, good. So everyone's comfortable with that. Yeah, excellent, good. Um, with regard to the fuel benefits, remember, once you've got the car benefit, what you then do is work on the fuel benefit. Um, in the fuel benefit, the examiner will give you, we never, we don't round up. We don't round up for the car benefit. With the fuel benefit, the examiner will give you the base level which is the fuel scale charge, 24,500. And then all you do is use the same percentages uh, for the fuel benefit, okay? Okay, let's now look at the next change. 
So the next change, uh, this applies to income tax and corporation tax. We now have something called a new structural buildings allowance. And this is referred to as an SBA, okay? So the idea here is if a company or a business buys plant and machinery, with plant and machinery, we can claim an annual investment allowance. Now, the annual investment allowance um, has actually been changed to 200,000, but what ACC have said is they're going to stick to the old 1 million, okay? So even though it's changed to 200,000, they for the exam, they're going to stick to 1 million. So let's say um, a company buys a building for, um, for 1 million pounds. Can the company claim the AIA on the building? Can you type in Y for yes or N for no? No, absolutely. You cannot claim the AIA on the buildings. Okay. Ayotonde, uh, with regard to the hybrid cars, you'll be given the figures. Okay. So you just use the same percentages. Yeah. Absolutely correct. So um, if you buy a building, you cannot claim the AIA, okay? So you cannot claim the AIA. So remember, with if you buy a building now, you don't get an AIA, you get something called an SBA. So we've got a new commercial building. So these are only available on new commercial buildings, okay? They must be newly constructed. Right? The examiner said he'll only give you brand new buildings. So we have a new commercial building, a getting an S, which gets an SP of 3% on original cost each year, the building is used in the trade. On disposal, there are no balancing adjustments and the new owner can continue to claim the 3% on cost. Okay, so the new owner uh, can then claim the 3% on cost. Now, the old owner, when you sell a building, you have to take the SBA that you claimed and add it to the capital gain. So the SBA now increases the capital gain. So let's say A Limited built a new office building for 400,000, which it started using on the 1st of October, 2020. So remember guys, we're getting an uh, SBA of 3% on cost. So can any of you guys tell me how much we can claim each year? Can you type in your answer? Excellent, thank you, Emma. Thank you, Emma. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Ananya. So all you do is take 3% of 400,000, which is 12,000 a year. Now in the first year, no, uh, it can't be claimed on rented buildings. Okay, can't be claimed on rented. These are the buildings you're using in your trade. Okay, so you're using that in your trade, yeah. So in the first year, so A prepares accounts to 31st of December, for how many months did A Limited use it for the first year? So thank you, Harker, three months. So in the first year, A would claim 3,000 pounds. Now in the second year, which is 21, A used the building for the whole year, okay? A used the building for the whole year. So that means A would claim 12,000. In the last year, which is 2022, A sold the building on the 1st of December, okay? A sold the building on the 1st of December. So can any, can all of you type in how much SBA A Limited can claim for the last year to 31st of December, 2022? 11,000, thank you. Bella, 11,000, <laughs> okay? I've made it easy for you guys, okay? So I've said 12,000 a year, so this is 11 months, so it's obviously 11,000. Now, when B Limited buys the building, would B Limited claim SBA on the 400,000 or the 500,000? What do you think, guys? 400,000, excellent. So you always claim SBAs now on the original cost, okay? So because A Limited only used the building for one month, how much SBA can A Limited claim? 1,000, thank you, yeah. That's how easy it is, guys, okay. Now, A Limited has sold the office building to B for 500,000. It bought the building for 400,000. So can everyone tell me what A Limited's capital gain is? So what is A Limited's capital gain?
please try and get it right, guys. So far, no one has got the capital gain right. You have to add the SBAs that A Limited has claimed to the capital gain of 100,000. What is the total SBAs A Limited has claimed? Well done, Daniel. Well done, Daniel. Uh, Talegul, excellent. Well done, Bella. So A Limited has claimed 26,000 in total, right? 26,000 in total. So you take the 26 and you add it to the 100,000 gain. So what is A Limited's capital gain? Ayotunde? Ananya, good. Excellent, yeah. You're getting it right, good. I want to see, very good. Now all of you have understood that. So that's 126,000, excellent, okay? So um, what you can see here is that um, in the first uh, year, A Limited would claim 3,000, second year, 12, third year, 11,000. So the total claimed is 26,000. So what you then have to do is take the total SBAs and add it to the capital gain to give you 126,000, okay? And the new owner B Limited uh, would claim uh, just 1,000 pounds. Uh, absolutely correct, yes. Well, because you got back to the, what HMRC is trying to say here is the way to think about it, Nafisa, um, is A Limited has sold the building for 500,000. Did A Limited get back its original cost, Nafisa? Did A Limited, yeah. So what is what has the building cost A Limited? What is it? Nothing. Can all of you see that? No, it didn't. The net cost to A Limited is zero because when it sold the building, it got back its 400,000 original cost. It actually made a capital gain. Did all of you understand that? So HMRC is giving you allowances. Oh, yeah, exactly. On the basis, the building is going to cost you something, but now you've got back your original cost. So why should they give you anything? So they take back the allowances by adding it to the capital gain. Did all of you understand SBAs? Type in Y for yes or N for no. Yes, of course you have to pay tax on the gain. Who's asking me this question? <laughs> Carol, Carol. A Limited has to pay corporation tax on the gain, okay? Because don't forget, it's reduced its profits by the amount of SBA's claim. So the tax liability in the past has been reduced. So now HMRC won that tax back, okay? Yeah, good. So good, so I've explained SBA's to you guys. So, so far guys, we've been here for coming up to half an hour. Do all of you feel you've already understood something? Do all of you feel it's been beneficial to you so far? Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I'm trying to cover as much as I can with you. The next thing we're going to look at guys is pensions, okay? Now, in terms of pensions, pension contributions, yes, Nafisa, all these things are likely to come up, okay? But obviously, you know, when we're doing the course, we're doing so much stuff. But what I'm showing you today is that, is that it'll help you. Um, this is something extra for you, okay? So pensions reduce your income tax liability, okay? So you have to go through this. Yeah, pensions have changed. Pensions have changed slightly, Charity, yeah. When, calcul when restricting the annual allowance, so the amount you're allowed to, uh, to contribute into a pension each year is 40,000 pounds, okay? Um, but what HMRC have said is the minimum is now 4,000. So if you're a very high income taxpayer, you can only contribute 4,000 into the pension scheme. So let's say we have a footballer like Paul Popper, okay? Have all of you heard of Paul Popper? from Manchester United, yeah? Yeah, he's my favorite. Or some of you have not heard about him, yeah? <laughs> okay, Paul Pogba uh, from Manchester United, one of my favorite players. Um, yeah, so Paul Pogba is a higher rate taxpayer. Yeah, I like, the, yeah, yeah, Sam, yeah, we like him, we like him, yeah, he's a good player. Um, and um, Paul Pogba is a higher rate taxpayer. So what we're saying is Paul can only contribute 4,000 pounds into his pension scheme, okay? Because he's a high income, um, he's a high income taxpayer. Oh yeah, Carol is saying you, you chose not to know him because he's a Manchester United player. Absolutely, never mind, Carol, never mind. So what HMRC have also said is the adjusted income and to find adjusted income, we add the individual's 
occupational pension contributions and any employer's contributions to the individual's income, okay? So when you find adjusted income, you have the individual's occupational pension contributions and any employer's contributions to the individual's income. And the income, uh, Ananya, the 3,600 is the minimum for people who don't have any income, okay? So if you don't have any income, you're still allowed to contribute 3,6. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, so the limit for the adjusted income is now 240,000. Now the formula you need to remember for the exam, okay, for working out the restriction um, is you're not given the formula in the exam, is 40,000 take away one half into adjusted income less 240,000. So let's say we have this lady here, this is our client, and this client, her name is Lai Chan, okay? Lai Chan, so she's, she's got a high income. And she's, Lai Chan has got employment income of 260,000, and she's also got occupational, pen, uh, total occupational contributions of 6,000. So can any of you tell me what Lai Chan's adjusted income is? What is her adjusted income? Two sixty-six. Excellent. Yeah. Well done, guys. So Lai Chan's adjusted income is two hundred and sixty-six thousand. So what you can see, yeah, very well. Not, not national insurance, Nafisa. This is similar to the formula for restricting the personal amounts. Yeah. Good. So based on that, yes, yeah, good. Um, based on that, can everyone work out what the maximum amount is? that Lai Chan can contribute into her pension without incurring a pension tax charge. Some excellent answers coming up. Very good. Excellent, guys. So this is something new, okay? This is something new. Excellent. So all of you, thank you, Doug. Doug is also getting into the swing of things, guys. Doug is a qualified accountant who's joined us for some CPD. So remember, even when you're qualified, guys, you're welcome to come back and see me for some CPD, okay? So that gives us 27,000. Now, Lai Chan is already contributing 6,000 pounds into the pension scheme. So what the examiner now asked you is what is the extra amount that she can pay into her pension? Very good answers coming through. I'm happy to see you guys are doing very well with pensions. Yeah, 21,000, okay? So uh, let's take a look at this answer. So what you have to do for Lai Chan is um, the formula is 40,000 take away one half into 266,000 less 240, okay? So the maximum amount Lai Chan can contribute into a pension is 27,000 pounds. Now she's already put in 6,000. So the last thing the examiner asked you is what are the extra pension contributions she can make? So because she's already put in six, she can now put in an extra 21,000 without incurring a pension tax charge. Okay, I have a tricky question for you. We've said that pensions reduce your income tax liability. Do pensions also reduce your capital gains tax liability? Why for yes or N for no? Most of you have got it wrong. Most of you have got it wrong. Pensions also reduce your capital gains tax liability because what happens is we extend the VATs, okay? So we're extending the 37,500 and we're extending the 150,000 higher rate VAT. So pension contributions also reduce your CGT liability, yeah, because capital gains are taxed as our top slice of income, okay? So you can see, guys, I'm making this quite... Uh, you know, I'm making this quite technical today, okay? So we're not doing easy stuff. We're doing uh, exam standard stuff, okay? So I'm building you up to exam stuff. Okay, let's now take a look at national insurance, national insurance. So there have been some changes to national insurance as well. Now, when you're dealing with national insurance in the exam, make sure you keep employee contributions separate for employer contributions, yeah. So guys, I'll be sending you the recording 
after the lecture, okay? Now, when I send you the recording, do you need to watch the recording today? Do you need to watch the recording today? Why for yes or N for no? Yes, you need to watch it today, okay? So if you watch it today, it will go into your memory, okay? Uh, but don't forget also, you have to take a walk, okay? So what I recommend you do is take a walk, clear your mind, okay? And then come back and watch the recording, okay? So at least you've learned something today. Yeah, it's a sunny, lovely day today. Uh, Carol is like me. Carol's originally from Kenya. Uh, I, I grew up in Kenya as well. So, you know, we were used to weather like this, okay? So that's why I'm encouraging all of you to make the most of it. So um, when you're dealing with national insurance in the exam, um, always think, are you dealing with an employee or an employer? Oh, Shamoya, you're origi originally from Jamaica. Shamoya, you're, you're one of my best friends now, okay? So I love, obviously we love the Caribbean. So uh, Shamoya, are you a good cook as well, Shamoya? Are you a good cook? Um, you can make us some lovely, uh, lovely Caribbean food, okay? Good. Excellent. Or maybe we'll get uh, Shamoya's mom to do it, okay? <laughs> Excellent. Good. Okay, guys. So um, with regard to employees, employees like us, uh, the lower earnings threshold is now 9,500. Okay, so that's something new. So for employees who earn less than 9,500, they're not subject to employee NIC. If you earn more than 9,500, obviously, the first 9,500 is tax free. For the employer, the class one secondary national insurance. Remember, employers have to pay what's called class one secondary, and the lower threshold is now 8788. 8788. And earnings above 8788 are taxed at 13.8%. Now, for employees, the upper threshold is 50,000. So once you go above 50,000, obviously you're taxed at 2%. But for employers, is there any upper threshold, guys? Is there an upper threshold for employers? No, there's no upper threshold for employers. Um, so any earnings you pay your employees above 8788 are taxed at 13.8%. Now, the other change is the employment allowance is now $4,000, okay? So it used to be three, they've increased it up to four, but it's not available if the employer's previous year's national insurance bill was a hundred thousand pounds or more so if the examiner tells you we have a large company like kaplan for example we have a very large national insurance liability so we don't even get the four thousand pounds okay so um the national insurance the employment allowance of four thousand is only available if the employer's total nic is less than a hundred thousand so let's say we've got this guy here on dago on dago is a self-employed timber merchant he has two employees who both earn 55,000 pounds each, okay? How much employer's NIC does Ondego pay? Can all of you work that out, please? So you're taking the full amount above uh, 8788, above a good, okay? Yeah, uh, Kelly is saying her Garmin watch told her the stress is high, Kelly because we're having a good time, Kelly, yeah? Very good. Guys, uh, thank you, Emma, thank you, guys. Don't forget to deduct the 4,000, guys, okay? Well done, Haka, yeah. Thank you, Emma. Uh, don't forget to deduct the 4,000, the 4,000 employment allowance, which is going to come up in your exam. So it's very popular. The examiner will ask you to compute employer's national insurance. Excellent. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Asma. Has everyone done that? Does anyone need more time? Some of you are doing things very Asa and Olu. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. <laughs> Olu, yeah, that's fine. Good. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. So, Doug, you can see how fast uh, the students go, okay? So when we're doing stuff, Doug, we go very fast, okay? Okay, so all you have to do, guys, is um, you just say 55,000, take away 8788 uh, 8, times 13.8%, 8 
and that then gives you 6377. Remember, the examiner is not bothered about rounding, okay? It's not bothered about rounding. So you then just take the 6377, you multiply it by two, and that gives you 1287, uh, 12754, and then you deduct the employment allowance of 4,000 to give you 8754. Now, guys, in the exam, when you're doing the advanced tax exam, is it necessary to do things in columns or can you do your calculations in sentences like this? Are you allowed to use sentences? Yes. So this is what I'm trying to show you, okay? This is a very quick way to do the calculation in the exam, okay? Okay, so we've now finished with uh, national insurance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, minimize the chat box because what I'm now going to do is I'm now going to take you to capital gains, okay? So capital gains. So if you remember in the past, we used to have uh, a capital gains tax relief called entrepreneur's relief. And with regard to entrepreneur's relief, we're allowed to make business gains up to uh, 10 million over our lifetime, which were taxed at 10%. So entrepreneur's relief has now been abolished. And what HMRC have done is they've now introduced business asset disposal relief. Now, business asset disposal relief is available for both sole traders or shares in a personal trading company. So it's available for a sole trader or shares in a personal trading company. And um, with, uh, with uh, business asset disposal relief, all we do is we call it bad relief, guys, okay? So we call it bad relief because that's a quick way of us saying it, okay? But in the exam, you just write BADR. So BADR allows, this allows up to 1 million of an individual's business gains um, over the lifetime to be taxed at 10%, okay? So over our lifetime, we have this limit of uh, 1 million. Now, when you're doing, uh, when you're dealing with the disposal of a sole trader, you have to compute the gain on each asset separately. Can any of you guys tell me uh, what the two chargeable assets for a sole trader would be? If you call it entrepreneur's relief, you will get no marks, Nafisa, okay? Yeah, the examiner does not want to see uh, entrepreneur's relief, anything, yeah. Good, no, guys, yeah, the two, uh, very good, it's buildings and goodwill. So the two chargeable assets we could have for a sole trader are buildings. Haka with plant and machinery, these are depreciating assets, Haka, okay? And because they're depreciating assets, you're likely to sell them at a capital loss. So you're not going to make a gain. Is that okay, Haka? So you're not going to claim bad relief on that, yeah, okay. Good. Um, don't forget there's no bad relief on uh, investments like rental buildings. They only give you bad relief on assets used in the trade. And uh, in order to get bad relief, um, you, you have to dispose of the entire business. So the sole trader is disposing of the entire business. And remember, check to see that the asset has been owned, the sole trader business has been owned for two years. If he gives you bad relief for shares, what you do is you don't work out the gain on the individual assets, you work out the gain on the shares, okay? And what you have to do is check to see that the individual owns at least 5% only share capital and has been employed by the company for at least two years. Now, in terms of bad relief, guys, uh, when we get bad relief, uh, when we get bad relief, do we, does the individual have to work for the company on a full-time basis? Y for yes or N for no? No, excellent, yeah, good, okay? Thank you, guys. So as long as you, even if you work for the company on a part-time basis, that, uh, that's good enough. Are all of you finding these uh, memory joggers that I've done here to be useful? All of you finding these memory joggers to be useful? Yes, okay. So what I'm gonna try and do is after the lecture, I'm gonna try and send you, yeah. I'm gonna try and send you these memory joggers, okay? So I'm going to use Dropbox because uh, Eventbrite doesn't allow us to send files. Yeah, th this is exactly it. This is from my book, uh, Advanced Tax Condensed, guys, okay? So these are uh, from my book, Advanced Tax Condensed. So you can see I write the memory joggers in different colors, okay? And with a memory jogger like that, is it easy to memorize it, guys? Is it easy to memorize it? Yeah, so you look at it and then you just copy it down, okay? So you look at it, you copy it down, and then it sticks in your memory. 
Okay, guys, let's now take a look at uh, exam questions. I'm going to reduce the chat box here. So we're looking at bad relief for a director or a shareholder. So what we're told here is we're told um, Jack sold his 20% holding in Tob Limited, realizing a gain of 650. Jack has owned the shares for the last 12 years and has worked full time as a director of the company for that period. So what you can see is Jack owns at least 5%. He's been employed by the company and um, he has satisfied the conditions for two years. So what this means is the gain of 650 is eligible for bad relief. Jack also sold the office building used by Top Limited for the last 10 years, okay, which he owned personally. So at the time he sold the 20% holding in Top Limited, he also sold the office building um, that Tob was using uh, for the last 10 years um, because he owned the building personally. It didn't belong to the company. And he had a gain of 500,000. You're told Jack um, charged Tob Limited full market rent. Okay. Now, guys, um, because Jack uh, charged uh, Tob Limited uh, full market rent, is the building eligible for bad relief? Yes or no? I want to see everyone type in an answer. No. Excellent. Don't fall into that trap. Because he charged the company rent, full market rent, you cannot claim bad relief on the property. Okay? Yeah. He, he, well, he should have actually charged the company. He should have let the company use it rent free, guys. Okay? So on that basis, guys, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Carol. Yeah. On that basis, with the property, with the gain of 500,000 on the building, the gain of 500,000 on the building. So we said the shares would be eligible for bad relief. The gain will be taxed 10%. But with the gain on the building, can all of you type in the rate of tax you're going to use? I'm seeing lots of people making a mistake and typing in 28%. So this is a mistake people are making in the exam. It's not residential, guys. Okay? So I don't want anyone to make that mistake in the exam. Yeah, it should be 20%, Mala. Very good. Mala, good. Uh, Doug, it's not 10%. Okay? <laughs> it's 20%. Okay? Good. So can everyone now work out the capital gains tax? that Jack has got to pay, okay? And type in your answer. We're told Jack is a higher rate taxpayer, so he's already used up his basic rate band, and his annual exemption is 12,300. He's still got his annual exemption. Okay, guys, some good answers coming in. Thank you, Olu, thank you, Devon, very good. So those of you who are responding to me, who are typing out your answers like Olu and Devon, are you guys already at the required speed you have to be at to pass the exam? People like Olu and Devon. Mala, Carol, yeah, good, good. So every, you guys who are typing the answer, this is the speed you have to go at in the exam, okay? So remember, I'm trying to get you used to the exam. Very good answer. Some very good answers coming. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Leslie. Carol, look back at your answer. You've made a mistake there. Okay. I want to see people type in your answers quick, guys. Okay, so that's the only time I can give you for that. Okay. So what we would say here is Jack's shares are eligible for bad relief. So Jack's shares are eligible for bad relief. So the CGT on the gain. Uh, would be 650 times 10%, which is $65,000. But Jack's office building is an investment, and the gain will be taxed at 20%. Now, in terms of the annual exemption of 12300 guys, will we allocate that to the bad gain or the rental gain? Which one? Bad gain or the rental? The rental. Yeah, very good. So this is what the examiner would want to see. So you're giving the annual exemption to that, 
So what you say is 500,000 take away 12,300 times 20%, which gives you 97,540. And then what you do to find the CGT, you then add the two figures together, okay? So you're adding the 65 to the 97,540 to give you 162,540. Now, if Jack, so if Jack, the examiner will then ask you to give Jack some planning advice. So um, if Jack wanted to claim bad relief uh, on the building, should he have charged Tob any money to use the building? No. Yeah, thank you, Bella. Thank you, Nafisa, Harka. Thank you, Ananya. Yeah, he should have allowed the company to use up the building rent-free. Now, if he allowed the company to use up the building rent-free, out of the 500,000 gain on the building, how much of the gain would be eligible for bad relief? So remember, he's already claimed 650. Excellent, thank you. This is what your exam is going to do, okay? So this is what your exam is going to do. Um, he's now going to examine the limit of 1 million. Yeah, excellent, yeah, very good. So you guys are able to understand that. So you would be able to claim bad relief on 350,000 of that gain up to the 1 million lifetime allowance. Do all of you feel you've understood bad relief? Go in there. If you've understood it, type in Y for yes. Yeah, good. Excellent. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Sadie. Yeah, good. Amitha. Hi. Nice to see you. Some of you guys, I don't know your names, so welcome to the course. Lovely to see you. Okay. The other change, guys, is on capital gains tax, principal private residence, okay? With regard to principal private residence, by the way, I, I'm sure all of you know that normally we pay our CGT uh, on uh, the 31st of January following the tax year, okay? But what HMRC have now said, um, obviously an individual's main residence is tax-free as long as it's occupied by the taxpayer, but what you now have to do for residential property is you have to make a payment on account within 30 days from the date of completion, okay? So you have to pay the CGT on residential property much sooner. You make the payment, uh, you make the payment on account within 30 days of the date of completion. Now, uh, if you're absent from the property, this will create a capital gain. In the past, the, the last 18 months of ownership was always treated as deemed occupation. What HMRC have now done is they've reduced the 18 months down to just nine months, okay? So you can see guys, they're trying to tax residential property in a big way, okay? So they're trying to tax residential property in a big way. Sorry. And now they're, they, want to dis they want to try and stop giving people letter relief. So in the past, we used to get letter relief up to £40,000 on our main residence if you let out your main residence. What HMRC have now said is they'll only give you letter relief if the property is let out at the same time as the owner lives with the tenant. Okay. <laughs> so what they want to do is basically stop giving you letting relief. Okay. Now, guys, are you likely, um, are you likely to live in the property? with your tenants, are you likely to do that? Yes or no? No, you're not likely to live in the property with your tenant. So yeah, um, yeah. So essentially, uh, um, with rent a room relief, a piece of the 7,500 is given if you rent out one room. But yeah, but now what they're trying to say is basically they want to stop giving people letting relief, okay? Okay, guys, uh, let's take a look at a question now, and we're going to work through this question together, okay? So remember, we're covering quite a lot of stuff, guys. Um, I'll have to put the chat box up here. Okay, so what we're told there is Emma, sold her house, uh, sorry, not Emma, Irina, 
Irina sold her house in London, making a capital gain of 800,000 on the 1st of January 20. So we're going to do this together, guys, because this is quite detailed. She bought the house on the 1st of January 96 and lived in it for two years before spending a year traveling. Now, after traveling, she returned to the house for six months. So can any of you tell me what deemed occupation we can claim for the period Emma uh, Irina went traveling? Yes, very good, Ken. We, um, no, Olu, yeah, we can claim up to 36 months or three years for any reason, okay? And we can claim that because, uh, because she, she lived in the house before and after the period of absence. Very good, guys. Um, next, she then uh, found a job in Scotland where she worked for five years. Now, if you work elsewhere in the UK, you're allowed to claim deemed occupation for up to how many months? Very good, Nafisa, yeah. If you work elsewhere in the UK. Yes, very good, guys. You can claim up to four years. But what can Irina claim for the last year? What can Irina claim for the last year? Any reason? Thank you, Sadie. Yeah, thank you, Sadie. Uh, thank you, Ken. She can claim the balance of any reason, okay? So very good. So while she was in Scotland, she would then be treated as deemed occupation because we're going to claim four years working elsewhere in the UK and one year for any reason. She then returned to London for two years before getting a job in Singapore where she worked for the next five years. While she was working in Singapore, what deemed occupation can we claim? If you work overseas, guys, are you allowed to claim uh, deemed occupation for any period if you work overseas? Uh, thank you, Harker. Yeah, thank you, Nafisa, Avnish, Leslie, Sam, Ken. Yeah, absolutely. So the entire period she was working in Singapore would be treated as deemed occupation. She then came back to London and she lived in the house for one year. So you can see even while she was working in Singapore, she lived in the house before and after the period of absence, before moving with her parents to care for them and let out the property. Okay. Now, in terms of deemed occupation for any reason, can Irina claim the balance of one year? Can Irina claim the balance of one year while she was living with her parents? No, she can't. She can't claim the one year, guys, because she didn't return back to the property before she sold it. Excellent. Very good, guys. Excellent. You've understood that. Um, in terms of the last period of ownership, would Irina claim nine months or 18 months? Nine months or 18 months? Nine months. Excellent. Very good, guys. The last question I have for you is, can Irina claim um, letting leave? Can Irina claim letting leave? No, she cannot claim letting leave because she didn't live in the property with the tenants, okay? So uh, let's go through this together. So what we're trying to say here is she is allowed to claim when traveling, she can claim up to 36 months for any reason because she lived in the property before and after the period of absence. So the entire one year would be treated as deemed occupation. That leaves us with 24 months remaining. While she was working in Scotland, she would claim four years working elsewhere in the UK and then use up one year of the 36 months for any reason. With Singapore, any period working overseas is always treated as deemed occupation. But then when Irina comes back to the property, she loses out on the 12 months for any reason. Okay, But she can claim for the last nine months deemed occupation. And there's no letting leave. Now, Irina sold the house on the 1st of January 2020. Can everyone type in the dates that Irina has to pay the CGT? This is new. So what I want to know, is it 31st of January? I don't, Carl, why are you going to Feb? Okay, it's, it's 30 days from the date of completion, okay? So is it 31st of January 20, or is it 31st of January 21? 
It's 31st of January, 20. Excellent. Well done, guys. So now, does HMRC want their tax very quickly, guys? Do HMRC want the tax very quickly? Yes. Okay. So that's the new bit that's coming to your exam. Okay, guys. So uh, I've now got a few small areas to cover with you. Uh, I'm going to just close down the chat box very quickly. Um, and I'm going to cover these small changes. So when dealing with rental income for individuals, we do not deduct um, any interest on a loan to purchase a property. So you know when we take mortgages to buy rental properties, we call these mortgages buy-to-let mortgages. So if you take a buy-to-let mortgage, you cannot deduct the interest on the buy-to-let mortgage from the rental income. What you do instead is you take the rent, the interest paid, you multiply it by 20% and you deduct it as a tax reducer, just like your double tax rate. Okay, so just remember now you claim this 20% income tax reducer from your tax liability, just like double tax rate, but you don't deduct it from the rental income. For inheritance tax purposes, um, if you leave a main residence to a direct descendant, so you leave a main residence to a direct descendant in the death estate, the residence mill rate band is now 175,000. And this is the maximum it goes up to. Um, so within a, between a couple, basically the conservatives wanted a, a couple to have 350,000 in total, okay? Um, so you now get a residence mill rate band of 350,000 for a couple. Uh, Nafisa, say absolutely, yeah, Nafisa, the whole idea behind this, of course, yeah. It's 20% it's for everyone, okay? Basic rate taxpayers, higher rate taxpayers, and additional rate taxpayers. Now for VAT, you ignore Brexit for now, okay? So remember guys, A, uh, the ACCA, uh, the ICAW, and uh, all of them, the CTA, will not examine Brexit in uh, 2021. So Brexit will come in in 2022 after the March 2022 exam. Now, uh, those of you who are doing the first tax paper, who's the person doing the first tax paper? So you're not doing advanced tax, okay? So if you're not, yeah, Sadie, Sadie, yeah, Sadie, asthma, you don't have to worry about the next point I'm making. So it's only one point that relates to advanced tax, okay? So Tanaka and so on, yeah, so you guys don't worry. This is not, R&D is not examinable for the first tax paper. Uh, R&D is, no, no, I don't, I don't mean the first one on the day, sorry. Yeah, oh, yeah. I said, yeah, I know, that, that's what I was surprised about when you said you, no, I'm talking about uh, not uh, people who are not doing advanced tax, there's no R&D. Charandeep, the 13% has now changed to 14%, okay? So uh, for corporation tax, the SME, uh, yeah, absolutely did come up in the last exam, if you said. Uh, the SME above the line tax credit is 14%, for large companies. Now, with regard to the um, um, with regard to the S uh, with regard to the R and D tax credit, is that treated as part of our taxable total profits? Is it part of our TTP? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so it is part of our TTP. It's, it is part of our TTP. Okay, guys. Uh, sorry, actually, you know what? You guys are right, actually. You're, you're right. You're right, actually. Okay? So I think, sorry about that. Charandy, if you're right, I, I, I don't know why I said 14%, actually. Thank you for pointing that out, Charandy. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, you're right, actually. This should actually be 13%. Thank you, Charandeep. Yeah. I, why did I go to 14? Sorry about that. Yeah. So 13%. Okay, good. So, yeah. Thank you, Charandeep. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. So why did I go to 14? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's my mistake, Kelly. It's my mistake. Yeah. Um, I, I was still thinking of something else. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so X Limited has got profits of 1.1 million and no R&D has been accounted for, okay? 
So X Limited spends 100,000 on qualifying R&D. What is X Limited's corporation tax bill? Okay, so can all of you work it out? And I've got to work it out myself as well because I used 14%, okay? So when you're working, so guys, um, with regard to the 100,000, um, what do we have to do with the 100,000 first? With the 100,000, you have to deduct it from the 1.1 million, okay? What you then do is you say 100,000 times 13%, which is 13,000, and the 13,000 will be added to the income. So that gives you 1013 thousand okay so the ttp is 1.013 million you tax that at 19 percent to give you 192470 okay uh, i'll show you this guys because you know it might be a bit tricky for you So it's my mistake, guys. Sorry about that. I used I used fourteen percent. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So um, yeah. So we've got one point one million. We've got one million there. And then all we are doing here is we're then going to take a hundred thousand times thirteen percent, which is thirteen thousand. Okay. And then one zero one three thousand times nineteen uh, percent. That gives you 192,470. So 192,470. And then all you then do is you take the 13,000 tax credits and you deduct it here. So 192,470 take away 13,000. And that gives you what? Yeah. 192470 take away 13,000 is 179. Okay, did all of you understand um, the above the line R&D tax credit? Yeah, so quite a few of you got that right. 179470. So all you have to do, guys, is sorry is you treat the r d above the line tax credit as taxable income okay um scroll down chandy he's saying for this year is that what you're talking about chandy Okay, hopefully all of you can see it now, yeah? So hopefully everyone can see it now. Oh, it's cut off at the bottom, you can't see. Chandy, that's your own screen. Okay, wait, wait, wait. It's not letting me do that, yeah. Can everyone see 179470? Can everyone see 179470? Yeah, yeah, you guys can see. I thought so, Charandy, if it's your own settings, Charandy. It's not my settings. Yeah, um, yeah um, for, for SMEs, for SMEs, we claim a total of 230% allowance on R&D qualifying expenditure, but they don't get this above the line tax credit, okay? So for SMEs, you claim, um, 
230% first year allowance and qualifying R&D. And then you can, ex if you create a loss, you can exchange the, the loss for an immediate cash refund of 14.5%. Um, so yeah, Bella, you're absolutely correct. Uh, there are no changes for SNEs. There's only a change from, <laughs> I said 14%, sorry about that. There's only a change uh, to, um, 13%, sorry, from 12 to 13%. Yeah, absolutely, Sam. Okay, guys, uh, in terms of essential tax knowledge, okay, um, I know many of you guys have this anyway, uh, so I've prepared a set of advanced tax condensed notes, uh, which have everything that you need, all the advanced tax syllabus in 149 A4 pages based on accelerated learning techniques and the cost is $99.99, inclusive of postage and packing, okay? So if any of you want that, you just uh, contact me on LinkedIn or contact me through my website, okay? Which is neildacosta.co.uk. Okay, so resources and uh, final questions. Very good, Yahaka, thank you for that. Um, so, um, there's lots of stuff on um, uh, that I've prepared for you uh, at neildacosta.co.uk. Um, you know, I write lots of articles, ex uh, you know, attend my seminars, uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, and um, lastly, we're going to look at any questions. But what I'd like to do, guys, is we're going to do a little quiz. Is everyone ready for a little quiz, guys? Is everyone ready for a quiz? Yes, yes. Now, I haven't made the quiz too difficult, okay, because I know some of you would be a bit tired today. Uh, so, can all of you see the quiz coming up on your screen? Can everyone see the quiz coming up on your screen? Yes, good. Okay, so I want everyone to answer the first question. So, I want everyone to answer the first question. So, the first question is, what is the new SBA on commercial buildings, okay? So this is available on commercial buildings, offices, warehouses, that kind of stuff. No, no, uh, type in the answer, type in the answer, guys, okay? You're answering it, you're answering the, 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 the test. Don't type the answer in the chat box. I want to see you, yeah, surely you should be able to answer it are you answering it yeah very good excellent good excellent good 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 secondly uh what is the adjusted income limits that we use for restricting personal pension contributions so what's the new limit guys yeah good i want to say only four people are answering it guys type in your answers you're doing something online yeah 240,000, only four, five people, six, yeah. You should be typing in your answers quickly. Do any of you remember what the, um, what's the minimum pension contributions? Sorry, not, yeah, the minimum, yeah, 4,000, excellent. Good. good, 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 excellent. We're going on to the third question. What is the National Insurance Employment Allowance? 4,000, you can see it's the same as the minimum pension contributions, guys, okay? So it's easy to remember that, good. Haka, why are you saying nine? So the employment allowance is the, oh, the next question, thank you, okay? Thank you. Um, what is the new name of entrepreneurs relief? So is it horrible relief, guys? Yeah, no, it's, yeah, very good. Some of you said good. Who said, who said entrepreneurs, who said the new name is, it's, uh, is good relief, okay? So it's actually bad relief, guys, okay? So the new name of entrepreneurs relief is bad relief, okay? Yeah. Okay, uh, question five, question five. What is the deemed occupation that's available on any main residence for PPR? 9, 18, 36, or 48. It's any main residence, guys. So don't go for the 36 months, Anita, okay? Some of you are saying 36 months. It's not, it's the last nine months. You only get the 36 months 
if you live in the property before and after the period of absence. I don't know if you see that. So the correct answer is nine months. Good. <laughs> this is where I made a mistake, guys. What's the new above the line R&D tax credit for large companies? 13%, excellent, 13%, good, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, how did you find today's webinar? How did you find today's webinar? Who's saying okay? I want everyone to say I loved it, okay? I want everyone to say I loved it, okay? So you should be saying loved it, good, um, good. Uh, very good, guys. Now, finally, do you feel more confident about passing the exam now if you work hard um, until the exam? Okay. So I want everyone to say, I'm on fire. Okay. So I want everyone to say, I'm on fire. I don't want anyone to say, uh, I'm quietly confident that I can get 50%. Okay. So what we're trying to say here is, I hope I've given you a boost, guys. And uh, you're going to use this to launch your um, your uh, hard work and your preparation for the um, for the actual uh, June exam. Okay, so it's been a pleasure meeting you guys. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Olu is already asking me for uh, another seminar. Okay, uh, Olu is already asking me for another seminar. I might do another one of the revision. Um, but give me a chance to recover from today, guys. Okay, so um, uh, I hope all of you have enjoyed it, um, and uh, I wish you the very best of luck uh, uh, for your June exam. Um, don't forget you can connect with me on LinkedIn, and um, you can follow my posts. And there's lots of useful stuff on my website. Okay, so pleasure meeting all of you guys. Have a lovely, um, lovely weekend. What are you going to do after the seminar? What is everyone going to do after the seminar? What are you going to do, guys? You're going to take a walk. Good. Uh, my pleasure, guys. Lovely meeting all of you. Uh, make, make the most of the sunny weather. It'll make you, I've covered a lot of stuff with you, okay? So I've covered a lot of stuff uh, with you. I've compressed a lot of material together. So you do need time uh, to digest it. So I recommend you have a bit of a break. And then what I'll do is I'll send you the recording. And I'll also try and attach the notes to that. So pleasure meeting every one of you and uh, good luck. Uh, good luck in the exam, guys, okay? So yes, so all the results are out there, good. My pleasure, lovely seeing you guys.